Welcome. In this video, we take on scenario five of the Dunwich Legacy, Undimensioned and Unseen. So our story continues. Your search of the village of Dunwich has uncovered a number of documents, journal entries, and esoteric theories. Reading through these materials leaves you exhausted and emotionally drained. Most of the content was written by a single source, a man named Seth Bishop. When you ask around town, you learn that Seth is a citizen of Dunwich, along with several others. Seth has witnessed firsthand the devastation wrought by the events of the Dunwich Horror, as Armitage has dubbed the incident. Curiously, since that time, very few people had seen Seth around town, and those who did claimed his eyes had been bloodshot and his face sweaty and pale. You don't doubt that somebody who has seen what Seth has seen would appear nervous or paranoid, but the more you read of this frantic and unhinged writings, the more you believe he is involved in recent events. His writings speak of having gathered the remains and of using arcane methods to imbue the father's essence into other creatures and eventually into other people. The explanations and diagrams to follow are unfathomably complex and defy understanding. Before you are able to find Seth and confront him, several men and women from the village approach you in a panic. It's back, one of them wails. You recognize him as Curtis Whateley of the Undecayed Branch. Whatever it was that killed them fries is back. Up and smash the bishop's home like it were made of paper. Curtis and the other townsfolk are clamoring against themselves, raising their voices in panic. The investigators must decide, choose to either calm down the townsfolk or warn the townsfolk and convince them to evacuate. That's probably best if they leave town. So we'll skip to part two. So you warn the townsfolk that they are in grave danger and urge them to flee Dunwich while they can. Several of them immediately heed your advice, remembering the terrible monstrosity that had previously endangered the town. Curtis drops to his knees in despair, sweating feverishly. It's that thing again, ain't it? It's come back for us, Curtis stutters. I hope you've got some of that powder the old professor had last time. We couldn't even see the damn thing until he sprayed it. To this day, I wish I hadn't seen it at all. Something must be done to stop the monster's rampage. But if the documents you found are true, there may be more than one such creature on the loose. So we record in our campaign that we warn the townsfolk. And then for our setup, we're going to gather these encounter sets, which I've laid out here. Put one of the two versions of the following locations into play at random. So for the locations, there are six different locations and two of each. And we will randomize those here in a little bit. And we will start in Dunwich Village. We'll check the number of names recorded under Sacrifice to Yog Saloth, which was one. So if there are one or fewer names listed, we'll put one copy of Brood Yog Saloth in a play in Cold Spring Glen and one in Blasted Heath. Then set the final three copies aside out of play. So two are going on the locations we'll set up later, and the other three were being set aside for now. Then we'll set each copy of the formula aside out of play. So here's the formula for an action fight. This attack uses willpower instead of fight or combat, and you get plus two for this attack for each clue on the attacked enemy. Then the investigator with the powder in his or her deck may search it and put it into play. So we'll go ahead and have that done. So it enters play with X clues on it, where X is the number of characters who survived the Dunwich legacy in her log, which was four. Then as a free trigger, we can move on clue from here to an exhausted brood of your at your location. Next, we'll search through our collection from Basic Madness, Injury, and Packs, and add one to our deck for the remainder of the campaign. So we've got one hidden there we'll add to our player deck. And you'll shuffle the remainder of the encounter cards to build the encounter deck. Then, of course, our story so far. Rampaging creatures, reports of terrifying entities wreaking havoc across the countryside have caused the citizens of Dunwich to panic. Worse, the creatures seem to be invisible to the naked eye. So forced at the end of the enemy phase, move each brood of yog Saloth enemy once toward a random location. And it has a threshold of five on that. 
And then for Act, the monsters tearing through Dunwich County are immune to traditional weapons. Only by reciting a particular incantation can the creatures be defeated. First, you must search the ruins of Wilbur Waitley's home in order to find the final sections of the otherworldly script. Objective, only investigators at the ruins may spend the requisite number of clues as a group to advance. So we're looking for two there. So finishing our setup at the table, got our encounter stack given in a final shuffle. Then for setting up our locations, instead of shuffling six decks of stacks of two together, I'll shuffle them all out until we get six different locations in play. So starting with the Cold Spring, 10 Acre Meadow, Blasted Heath, second Cold Spring, Devil's Hop Yard, the Waitley Ruins, and then we need the Dunwich Village. And the other six going away, they recommend shuffling these for randomizing them, but I'm just going to use a six-sided die once I get them set up in their suggested location. So no Dunwich Village goes over here. Cold Spring on the bottom, 10 Acre. So they recommend a setup like that. And I'll label those so I don't forget for randomizing our locations. The Broods, they're going into Cold Spring Glen and the Blasted Heath. See, they've got a fight of six, health of one, and an evasion of three. They're massive, so they change some of the rules in there. Uh, they get plus one health per player, so two health and cannot be damaged or attacked except using the ability on Esoteric Formula. And when they hit, they hit fairly hard. So one down there and one up top. So our Ash Campete, we start in Dunwich Village. We've got our Indebted in play, so we start with three resources. I added Charisma last time, so that's a permanent, so we have an additional ally slot. I did not remove a card for that, so I'm taking baseball bat out of our deck. We've got the powder here, which has four tokens on it, and Duke, and then our random weakness gets shuffled in there. So we'll give that a little shuffle, and then we'll look at five cards. And see how we're starting this thing. So an emergency cash, perception, unexpected courage, a fire axe, and more perception. Most of them are really good cards, but I really want an asset to get started in this game. So I'll discard those two and hope we can top deck into an asset or an ally, and we did not. So we'll shuffle these back in place. And we are ready to get started. So our first goal is to be here and spend two resources. And with two things we can't hurt yet, I feel like getting our first goal is gonna be important. But at Dunwich Village, we've got a Shroud of Three and one clue. We've got a Resign ability, so it's a good way to start. We can get out of here and hide from the creatures. There's a trigger, you borrow some hounds to track the creatures by scent, so Duke found some friends. An investigator in Dunwich Village may place one of his or her clues on any abomination enemy in play. Group limit once per game. So movement-wise, from Dunwich, we can get to these three locations. From Ten Acre, we can get to our bottom three. From here, we can get to these three. This gets us to those three. That gets us to these two. And that gets us to the village and the yard. So that's our GPS. We're going to start out with Duke, 
having us run into the 10 acre wood and investigating. Shroud of two, we've got three clues on here. You set a bait using a live animal. Each investigator in 10 Acre Meadow may place one of his or her clues on an abomination enemy in 10 Acre Meadow. So once per game. And even though it's four on two, I'm hoping I can draw into a good asset. So we're gonna up that to six on two. Getting Minus one for each brood in play, so we're minus two, so we passed. And we'll draw a card into overpower. Hate to do it, but I'm gonna pitch this to Ready Duke so we can use his ability again to move and investigate and hope there's a clue to be found. All right, so here, Shroud of Three, two clues. We are minus one willpower, and we can hurl a nearby canister of paint at a monster. An investigator in the ruins may place up to three of his or her clues on an abomination enemy here once per game. So once again, we are four on three. We're gonna boost that to make it five on three. Getting a minus two, so we're good there. And we get to draw a card. Which isn't what I was expecting, but that'll work. So we can use a flare to go finding someone. Search the top nine cards of any investigator's deck for an ally asset and put it into play under your control. But then we lose this card, but I feel like we need some help in here. So for our third action, we're gonna go ahead and do that. And we found one person to help us. I think that's all we had. So we're searching. So that's not gonna trigger at least. So we get Zeb, we get to put him in play. He is going to give us plus one to our willpower. And after we succeed at a willpower test on a treachery card, we exhaust him to draw a card. And that cost us two. And that is exiled, so we're done with that. And the rest of these will get shuffled in. And we'll see what kind of madness is about to start. Well, we are in the right place with the right amount of clues, so I'll go ahead and do that. So only investigators here may spend the clues as a group to advance, so we're advancing. Dr. Armitage survived the Dunwich legacy which he did, so there, he sighs, a breath of relief, jotting down the last phrases of the formula. I've translated the last of it. He shudders as he hands you the script, the words conjuring forth memories of his battle with the creature. I hope this is the last time I'll have to read it, he admits, but if we do nothing, the end result will be much, much worse. So each investigator puts into play one set aside esoteric formula. So that's gonna allow us to fight using a world power instead of combat. We'll get plus two for this attack for each clue on an attacked enemy. Then we move on to they must be destroyed. With the formula in hand, you finally have the means to destroy the creatures wreaking havoc in Dunwich, but only if you can survive long enough. So defeat as any brood, as many brood enemies as you can. There are no copies in play or set aside, we advance. So we only need to beat the two on the board and three that are potentially coming. So that concluded our investigation phase. For the enemy phase, 
any of these with the hunter keyword move. These are just massive. They are not hunters and we're not engaged, so they will not attack. So for before we get to upkeep, we're gonna roll and see where they wanna move. So the guy up top wants to head down here and his best path is to head through Dunwich Village. And this guy over here wants to go that direction. So they're gonna meet up in the village. We're gonna do our upkeep. Finding a working hunch. Gain a resource. And put out some doom. Then some rotting remains. So we're testing our willpower. For each point you fell by, take a whore. We've got a base five now, so we'll take the five on three. Getting a minus three. So we will take one whore. We'll give that to old Zeb. So I think what we're gonna do is use Duke to move and investigate. So we'll go back to the 10 acre meadow. Well, let's go ahead and see what's going on at the spring. So Shroud of Three, two clues. Each enemy in Cold Spring gets minus one evade. So trigger, you lure the creature into the dense tree cover and it becomes tangled. Investigators in Cold Spring may, as a group, place up to two of their clues on an abomination enemy in Cold Spring once per game. So we get to investigate. We're base four on three. We'll make that five on three. I'm sorry, six. Getting zero. So we find a clue. Then we'll put in a leather coat in play to give us plus two health. And for our third action, we're gonna draw a card Finding a laboratory assistant. So enemy phase, they don't move, we're not engaged. So then randomized movement. One of them wants to go to the 10 acre meadow. And the other one wants to stay where he's at. Upkeep. Look what I found. 3rd resource, 2nd doom, drawing a card, unhallowed country, put this in play in our threat area, can I play assets, treat the printed text box on each ally asset you control as if it were blank, At the end of your turn, test your willpower, if you succeed, discard this, that's I guess good to get over with before we're in the middle of a fight. Oh, without our assets to be able to use, we're not good at finding things. So first action, we'll draw a card, finding Peter. Our second action would have been great if we could play him. We'll draw another card. All right, at the end of your turn, take one direct whore. So that was a mistake. In our third action, we'll just get a resource. So nothing useful that whole round. So it's at the end of our turn, so we get to test our willpower, which is a base four, since all this stuff down here is blank. And we're forced to take a direct horror also. We'll go ahead and do that. So four on three, we'll make it five, six on three. Getting a minus two, so that means this goes away. So now the enemy phase, randomly, we'll see where this guy wants to go. He wants to move over here, and this guy wants to move over here. So upkeep, drawing a card, finding Earl. And 
getting a resource, spreading some doom, and drawing into an altered beast. If there are no abomination enemies in play, this gains surge, but we've got two. Choose an enemy, heal all damage from that enemy, and attach this to it. When you enter his location, take one horror. I right, guess it really doesn't matter which one it goes to. So we've got three actions. The first two is getting rid of this. The next one will be bringing Peter into play. Or last one for three. Thanks to our charisma, we can have two allies. Or two ally slots, I should say. Enemy phase, we'll see where they're running to. This guy trying to go up top, so he runs over this way, and then this guy wants to go into the meadow. So they're just circling around us. We're just moving along and not getting anything done. So drawing into Lucky, gaining a resource. Our fourth turn, we haven't even touched one of those guys yet, and cannot play assets or events. So we are going to use Duke to help us investigate here. So base four on three, we'll make it six on three. Getting minus three. So we're good. Gaining a clue. Second action will be to move in here. We'll become engaged with this guy. Third action will be to evade him. We've got a base three. We've got a total of four to evade. He's a three. Kind of want to do this. So we'll go five, six. On three. Good thing we did. So we've now evaded him. He is exhausted. Since he's exhausted, we can now spin, throw some powder on him. So we can move, it's a free trigger, move one clue from the powder to an exhausted brood. We're gonna go ahead and throw two on him. And then also, it's a free trigger. We can borrow some hounds, so Duke and his dogs. The investigator here may place one of his or her clues on any abomination enemy in play. I think we'll throw that over on this guy. And I'll just throw a token over there to let me know I've used that ability. So enemy phase, there's no hunters out there, so we'll see where they want to move to. So this one wants to go this direction. Doesn't matter which way it goes, we have them go through Cold Spring. And This one is going to come over and say hello to us. Because to get over here, he's got to go this direction. So upkeep phase. Ready your dog. Draw a card into cunning distraction. Gain a resource. We're putting our fifth token on this. So an old pickup truck rolls to the stop along the weather trails of Dunwich. The driver Joe Osborne calls out to you through a shattered driver's side window. Truck's engine still running. It's over at the Eric's farm, he shouts. Done blasted their place apart. Poor Henry and Martha. You ask Osborne for the location of the Eric's homestead and it confirms your worst fear. For that attack to have occurred recently, there must be more of the monsters on the loose. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck and then spawn one of the set aside broods into a random location. This gets shuffled in. Uh, we would have lost this, so that's getting shuffled in too. And 
And then this next brood is coming in the ruins. So biding its time, once in a while a wind sweeping up out of cold Spring Glen would bring a touch of ineffable theater to the heavy night air, but the look for terror did not appear. Whatever was down there in the Glen was biding its time and Armitage told his colleagues it would be suicidal to try to attack it in the dark. At the end of the enemy phase, we're moving all the broods some more. Then we're gonna get a card. Ruin and Destruction. There are no investigators at the same location as a brood. Ruin gained surge, but we are at the same location. So brood, we've got to test our agility. For each point we fail by, we take one damage. So our agility is three, four. So four on three is what we've got. Getting a minus one, so we made it. Oh, and actually when this guy came to say hello to us, we did gain a horror from that, which we'll give to Peter. Well, we have to start fighting. So our first action, we're using the formula here. So we're using our willpower, base four, five, six, Seven, eight for that. So we're eight on six. I'm gonna make it 10 on six. So minus one for each brew to minus three. So we're good. We hit him once, which will put two damage on him. Then our second attack is gonna be the exact same, except we don't have the plus two. So this is just gonna be eight on six. Getting reveal another token. Getting minus two, so we succeed. And that will kill one of them off. For third action, we're gonna draw a card into Overpower. And end of our turn, heal a whore off of Peter. Enemy phase, nothing's happening from the regular part, so roll for movement. We'll go with this guy here. He wants to go that direction. And his quickest way is to come through us. And then this guy over here, also want to go to the same place. We'll just take him up to 10 acre wood. Upkeep, drawn into will to survive, gain a resource, spread some doom, and an altered beast. So we've got enemies in play. This is gonna go heal all damage Choose an abomination enemy, heal all damage from that enemy. All right, we'll put it on this one. Then back to our turn. Well, we've got the resources. We've got the will to survive. So this is fast, not gonna cost us one of our actions. We're gonna spend four. Until the end of your turn, do not reveal chaos tokens for any skill test you perform. So four there, our first skill test, we'll fight. So we're base six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's a shame to use that here, but I had the resources, didn't see a reason not to waste it. So first attack is gonna hit and put one on it. Our second will do the same thing. So we've got another one taken care of. For a third action, we'll use Duke to investigate. Getting a free clue. And I was happy with that turn. Enemy phase. We've just got this guy to worry about. So he's moving. And that means he's coming to say hello to us. And when he comes in, we're gonna take a whore, which we'll put on Peter. 
upkeep, ready, draw a card into a rabbit's foot, gain a resource, spread some doom, and draw a card. So surge, each brood of Yog enemy and play moves once towards you. Well, he's already found us, so we've already attracted him over. So we'll deal with the surge. Navy and thrall, that's a problem. So it's a hunter, always being attacked using a ranged firearm or spell asset and gets minus three fight. Yeah, I really don't want to deal with two creatures at once. But it's back to our turn. All right, first action, we're going to have Duke attack our big bird here. So we're base four on five. I'm going to try to overpower it to go to six on five. Getting, this is minus one for each brood. So there's only one in play, so we made it. So that's gonna put two damage on it. Thank you, Duke. Then we'll discard our laboratory assistant to ready Duke to have him fight again. Oh, we did get to draw a card from that. So we got Professor Warren Rice. And for the second fight, we're going to overpower again. So six on five, getting a minus two. But we've got a lucky dog. So this is fast. When you would fail a skill test, we can play this for one. Uh, get plus two to our skill value for that test and draw a card. So we'll draw a card for that. Getting Old Book of Lore. We did the damage because we succeeded there. And since we were successful, we'll draw a card for that. Getting the Big Deep. So for our third action, we are going to attempt to evade this guy. So we're gonna be a base four. We'll make it five. So five on three. Getting a plus one, so we've evaded him. And now that he is exhausted, we're gonna take our last two tokens to put on him, which is gonna wipe out all the powder we had made. So enemy phase, he's not engaged with us since he's exhausted. So then we'll roll to see if, where he moves. So he is headed up this direction. Then he will ready, along with Duke. Draw into a knife. Gain a resource. Spread some doom. And dissonant voices. So we can't play assets or events. At the end of the round, we'll discard that. I think we'll go ahead and move up there with this guy and take a whore. Can't remember if I took one off him or not, so. Action two is gonna be to fight. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten on six. Getting a minus two. And our third action is gonna be the exact same thing. It's a minus three, but we're still good. So we've defeated this one. So that's three down, two to go. I uh, did not reveal this. So shroud of four, three clues on it. You lure the creature into a patch of sand, investigators and blasted heath may as a group place up to two of their clues on an abomination enemy in Blasted Heath once per game. So enemy phase, well, end of our turn, we get to heal Peter one. No enemies to deal with. Upkeep, finding a fire ax, gaining a resource. 
Then we'll get rid of that. Spread some doom, draw a card, hallowed country. So it goes in our threat area. Can I play ally assets? And we treat our ally assets as if they were blank. At the end of the turn, we test our willpower to get rid of this. So without Duke to help us investigate, that really messes with us. So since we can't play allies, we'll go ahead and put in a talent. We'll spend two. So let's us spend resources to help our willpower or agility. And for our second action, we'll put in rabbit's foot. Which cost one and our third action, we'll go get another resource. So end of our turn, we'll heal Peter. No enemies. Oh wait, end of our turn, we also test our willpower, which is a base four. Allies are blank. We're gonna make it five and spin one to make it six because I do not want to fail this thing. Getting a minus two. So we were six on three, so we're good there. No enemy phase, upkeep, getting scavenging, getting a resource, putting number five up there, and then getting a lupine thrall. Spawn at the farthest location from you. It's got hunter and retaliate. So I think the farthest location from me is probably over here. Or here. So back to our turn, we're gonna use Duke to move and investigate. So shroud of two, one clue. And we've got an ability, creature follows you up to the mud. Each investigator may place one of his or clues on an abomination enemy in Devil's Hop Yard. So we're base four on two. Getting plus two and ready Duke. Then our second action will be to move over here and investigate. So four on four. And we made it. Just double check, yeah, I haven't broken any of my slot restrictions. For my last action, I'll draw a card into a stray cat. Enemy phase, this guy's gonna Come one step closer to us. Upkeep, a little ready. Draw into a cache. Gain a resource. Then we're getting our sixth doom on here. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. There's a set aside brood. The lead investigator reads the following. Bleak storm clouds turn overhead and a blanket of rain pelts the countryside. As the downpour grows in intensity, you take refuge in a half-ruined shack nearby. There's a flash of lightning, and in the brief illumination, you spot the outlines of something large in the rain. That warning, the distant trees bend, though nothing seems to be bending them. Moments later, a force with the strength of a truck crashes into your refuge. Spawn one of the set-aside broods enemies at the lead investigator's location if able. Then each investigator there will test our agility. And then we spawn brood, makes an attack against each investigator who fails the skill test. So first we're shuffling all these in. All right, and then we're making a, a agility test. A four, we've base three, four, five, six and seven using a big deep. 
So seven on four. Getting a minus three, so that's the worst that could happen and we still make it. So he's in our spot. Horrors unleashed. Snow joke, tracking down something as big as a house that one could not see, but that had all the vicious malevolence of a demon. Each abomination enemy gets plus one fight and plus one evade. The end of the enemy phase, move each enemy towards a random location. This is the final one. So something tells me we don't get the chance to fight the last one. And I'm shocked I've made it this far. So then we'll get an encounter card. Eager for death. Test of willpower. Increase the skill by one for each damage on you. All right, we don't have any damage on us. We're just breezing through this. And I say it carefully as we can still die. So we're base four, five, six on two. Getting minus three, so we're good. So the first thing we're gonna do is the three triggers. So we lure the creature into a patch of sand. We may as a group place up to two clues on an abomination in this area, once per game, which we will do. And our first action is fighting. We're base six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. On seven now, they're plus one, so ten on seven. We'll go ahead and make it eleven on seven with a knife. Actually, nope, we're using a different symbol. So ten on seven. Getting a minus one, which does one damage. Second attack, same thing. Getting a minus two. And third action, we're just gonna move back to Dunwich. Enemy phase, he's gonna move, engage us, and hit us for one and one. Put one on Peter, one on our coat. Upkeep, drawing a card, finding Dr. Henry. Gaining a resource, spreading some doom, towering beast, attached to a brood and enemy in play. So there are none in play, so no legal target. And then just because there's really nothing else to do, I think we've done all we can, we'll go ahead and resign. Not that we're hiding. I just don't see another monster coming out before that goes away. And I don't know what's on the back side of that card. So we are going to go to no resolution was reached or we resigned. Resolution one, you did all you could to stop the rampaging monsters, but there were more of them than you realized and you weren't able to slay them all. Exhausted and terrified, you retreat to Zebulon's home and hope to survive the night. Your campaign log record that X brood escaped. It's total number of still in play or set aside, which is just one. If our deck contains the powder, remove it from the deck. So the powder is now gone. We earn experience equal to the victory X value of each card in the victory display. And there's none down here. So we've got four victory points, plus one from our previous adventure. So with her five XP, I'm gonna use one to get her flare back. Then I'm gonna use three to bring in the scrapper. So this is a permanent. That allows us to spend resources to fight or to evade. And with that, we're gonna to have to remove a card from our deck. I have never used a fire ax, so we're gonna get rid of that. And we'll still have one XP banked for next adventure. So that's everything for Undimensioned and Unseen. 
Hope you enjoyed this playthrough. So please click on the like button below and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.